Hello, and welcome to our first episode of The Lantern. This is a show about entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs, and uh, we're going to be covering a number of topics. If you've ever thought about doing a startup for technology or specifically our background has to be happens to be cybersecurity, uh, this is probably the show for you. But even if you've at all thought about doing some sort of a technology or other type of startup, we think that there's going to be enough information inside of these shows that you may want to tune in. So. My name is Drew McFarland. Uh, I've been in the cybersecurity industry for about 15 years and uh, done a number of small, small startups, uh, some you know, not so small startups, some we will, would have heard of before, some you hopefully haven't. And uh, as a result, we have you know, some of the bruises to, to show that you know, we've actually gone through this a little bit. And we would like you to be able to take advantage of some of the things that you know, the hard learned lessons that we've had so that we can make your process of doing a startup as smooth as humanly possible. Uh, John, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, thanks, Drew. My name is John Duran. I've been in the technology sector since the mid 90s. I've had an opportunity across that time to work in a number of startup organizations, and I've worked with a number of startup organizations. And we're really excited to share some of the lessons learned with you throughout this series. Uh, just a little disclaimer to get started, we're not attorneys and we don't play attorneys on TV. We've both done this a few times. And if you're going to go through this process, you really need to engage legal representation so that they can make sure your financial investments and your intellectual property are protected. There's some interesting things going on in the security realm right now that make this really timely. And we're excited to share all this info with you. Drew, you want to share a little bit about some of the things that you've seen happening in the security arena? Yeah, this is a very unique time in, uh, in this industry. Uh, unless you've been asleep uh, for the last several years, you'll you know, not have noticed that there's just a ton of VC funding uh, surrounding this entire industry. And there's a reason for that. There was a, a bit of a tectonic shift that occurred about four or five years ago where the economics of and monetization of cyber attacks has fundamentally changed. It used to be that the cyber attackers were out there for you know, maybe doing some espionage or, or you know, out there vandalizing, vandalizing some websites. Sometimes they were just out there for the lulls in you know, the old days of, of Anonymous. But when they created, started creating ransomware and put, stitching together all the different pieces that allowed that, they fundamentally changed the economics of, of, uh, of cyber attacks. Same thing, a lot of the phishing attacks that you're seeing, if you've, you know, if you've noticed that your inbox is getting more and more full of, of people trying to take advantage of that, it's exactly that reason. They figured out how to monetize it. And whenever you've figured out how to monetize an attack like that, you end up getting this entire industry, and it's now a multi-billion dollar industry uh, around trying to go out and illegally access your data. So as a result, it's a serious problem. It's it's really hard for you know small to medium business to ever put up the types of defenses that used to be just the exclusive realm of the large nation states and, and trying to protect themselves. So there's a big problem. There's a lot of money toward trying to find that solution. So as a result, if, if you've at all been thinking about this would be a really good idea for, for trying to solve even a fraction of that problem, there is a lot of money to be made uh, you know, out there from, from people who are looking to solve that problem. And there's obviously a lot of VC money, money available uh, to try to help you realize that goal. So the entire idea here is obviously whenever you start seeing that kind of money shifting place and shifting hands, there's uh, it attracts a lot of people. It also attracts a lot of uh, people who are just trying to take that money from you. So we're trying to give you and arm you as best as possible with what this process of doing a startup actually looks like. So you know what to expect, you know what's normal, so that, and you can try to steam, uh, streamline this uh, your own process so that you can be as successful as possible. The entire idea here is, you know, and that's why we, we started off this with go out and seek a good lawyer. That's probably some of the best advice that we're going to be able to give you because they're going to be able to help tell you what, you know, what is normal and what's not. And they're going to make sure that you are setting yourselves up for an ultimate outcome that's good. And then also making sure that you're not falling into any pitfalls or traps that, that could jeopardize the success of your organization. Our topic for today is the three P's, product, plan, and personnel. 
And very shortly, we're going to jump into each of these and talk a little bit about how important they are to understand as you go on your journey to start your security business. So thanks again for joining us. Today's topic is the three P's and we're gonna start off with personnel. We're gonna talk a little bit about how important it is to understand the meaning of personnel and how that appears to the venture capitalist when you start looking for funding and what you need to be considering when you think about it, as well as we'll jump quickly into plan and product. So yeah, as you mentioned, um... All the VCs, they they kind of look at those you know, those three P's the the, uh, the personnel, the plan, the product, uh, with varying levels of, of of interest behind both. Everybody sort of favors one. VCs that that's traditionally favor uh, personnel are people who believe that you know they're VCs that believe that regardless of what your product is, regardless of what your plan of of attracting the uh, you know going into the market is. If you've got the right people at the helm, they're going to make whatever they're whatever you're trying to do successful. You know, it's people with a proven track record. So almost by definition, if you're watching this show, this probably doesn't mean you, <laughs> because usually these are people who have gone through this a number of times. Usually with the VCs that are funding them, um, you know, once the VC has actually had a a good home run with a couple of people, uh, they like using those people over and over and over again. So. It is not uncommon to hear about some of these VCs uh, taking meetings with people that they've done before. And uh, those people walk in for a half hour meeting, they walk out with a check. Uh, and again, it really comes down to that trust. They, they trust the, the group and they trust that whatever obstacles might come in front of them, uh, they're gonna end, end up being able to, to navigate around them. So you do have those and there are absolutely certain uh, venture capital firms that focus on that. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that if you are trying, if you are getting funding from a VC that is predominantly interested in personnel, that uh, they're not going to fund you. But what it could mean is that if they do fund you, they're going to want to replace a certain number of people on your board, uh, you know, just to make sure that that it's operated in the way that that you want to have happen. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, depending on what your goals are. You know? If your goals are just to have a good, successful outcome, uh, replacing yourself and the rest of your team with a group that you know is going to be able to take it over the finish line and make everybody rich, it's better to have 25% of something than 100% of nothing. So that may be a route that you actually want to entertain. But you know, just to to be be forewarned to look for the VCs that seem to be uh, dealing with the same executive staffs company after company after company, uh, that that may be their their MO, that may be how they operate. And you have to make a decision on your own whether or not that actually works for your goals for your organization. In future shows, we'll probably come back to this topic and talk a little bit about how to find the right personnel. If, if, if that is the way you want to drive your business, and if you really want to start with a great leadership team before you go looking for funding, um, there are ways to do that. There's ways to find some of these teams. And there's also lots of examples out there where companies have even internally uh, sent out small groups of their organization to start off you know, these new, new ideas and spin up in, and incubate concepts. I think you'll find a lot of that's out there, a lot of opportunity for that. Let's move on to product because this is probably the most, the most common we see. Someone has a great idea and they want to bring it to market. What's the real challenge there, and, and how does that affect the VC market? Yeah, I, I'd be willing to bet that a majority of the people out there who are listening to this who are uh, thinking about uh, doing a startup, they prob this probably applies to them the most. Uh, you know, it's really common for, for somebody to be out there, especially if it's in an industry that you're already familiar with, uh, that they've got this wonderful idea for a product that they want to be able to bring to, to market. And there are VCs that absolutely look for that and and more than product specifically you know they're looking for intellectual property that's defensible so that that thing that you know that the VC is going to end up really interested in is what thing are you bringing to the table that nobody else has or nobody else can necessarily copy so they're looking for things that are going to be very unique they're going to be looking for things that are protectable uh, having a great idea that isn't protectable, you know, basically means that every large organization that you would normally be going into competition with 
can just throw some additional resources at and copy. Uh, they're trying to avoid that. So if, if there's something unique enough about the uh, the idea that it's it's protectable, it's patentable, and we'll, again, in future episodes, we'll talk a little bit about what that ends up looking like and what that ends up meaning. Uh, that's going to be very appealing to those types of organizations. So you'll end up seeing, you know, and, you know, and we'll, as I said, we'll also be going through how to look at and analyze different VCs. But, you know, if you look at a VC and you've determined that they are uh, in this space, and I would throw like Kleiner Perkins into one of those, uh, you know, one of those uh, camps, they're really interested in that new technology that, you know, that nobody else has. And we're just going to make that as defensible as possible. And that's what we're going to take, take to market. So they'll, you know, they will not be as concerned about letting you run the organization as long as you are, you know, proving that you can do it in an effective way. You know, they're not necessarily always going to replace you as uh, with um, adult supervision, so to speak. But uh, they are really interested in, in that. So there are some things that you would need to do, which we'll talk about at some point. Uh, to make sure that that you're making you know whatever that intellectual property is that you've got uh, as attractive as, as humanly possible uh, to them so that they feel comfortable investing in you. And again, you know from their standpoint, if you got the right product, you know uh, it doesn't really matter what your team looks like. It also doesn't matter matter too much what your plan looks like, you know if you've got a, a unique entree into the industry as long as they can see that there's a market for uh, what it is that you're trying to produce. I think the third P is really focused on the plan, and this is where customers are, uh, you know, where individuals who are starting a, starting up, really looking at products that already exist or maybe solutions that are already on the market, and have come up with a new way to implement that solution. They've come up with a new way to to solve a, you know an old problem that maybe has has been existing, uh, you know, the, sort of the new mousetrap concept here. But they've put a plan around how how to achieve that. There's some interesting aspects when it comes to the plan that also there's a variety of the venture capitalists that, that, that look at the plan maybe more so than the, the product itself or the personnel. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, just because there are other people in the space that you're trying to attract and, uh, and maybe there's not even a, necessarily a whole lot of product differentiation, you know, if you can show that you're kind of going after uh, a unique niche that is going to be hard for the the 800 pound gorilla in that in that space to be able to go after and attract, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to them. You know, you don't necessarily have to show that you're going to conquer the entire market. Uh, if you can show that that you can conquer and be very successful, you know, you know putting yourself into a Lynch uh, position uh, in order to be able to carve yourself out, you know, out something that the competition would uh, have a hard time doing, uh, they're going to be interested in that. Uh, an example that you know I I can tell you from from my background is uh, you know I I've worked for a, a number of different organizations that have advanced threat protection basically sandboxing type of solutions. Uh, so I was working for this one organization that was basically going head to head with with FireEye. They had their sandboxing solution, uh, but at the time FireEye was very invested. They'd gotten Wall Street really comfortable with the idea of selling hardware. Uh, so we knew that that, was, that would not be an easy thing for them to be able to pivot off of. So when we came to market, we came out with something that was very virtualizable. So you could run it on, on a virtual appliance, you could run it in the cloud, you could run it in a number of different places. Uh, even though the technology wasn't necessarily all that complicated to copy, uh, they had already gotten Wall Street really addicted to the types of revenues that you get when you're selling hardware. So they didn't. They were very reluctant to try to follow suit uh, at the risk of really upsetting Wall Street. So we kind of managed to carve ourselves out an interesting niche simply by the fact that we were going in a direction that the competition couldn't follow without uh, cannibalizing their own business, uh, which was a really good position for us. It gave us that opportunity, that brief window of opportunity uh, to allow us to go in there and capitalize and, and take advantage of that that space. Uh, so that, that's an example. You don't necessarily have to come up with a brand new piece of technology. Uh, sometimes it's it's tried and true stuff that is already well understood uh, that's being applied in a slightly different way uh, that you know that the competition aren't going to be able to easily follow. Um, and that could end up being good enough to be able to take you out to, to market in a successful way. It's, um, you know, again, it's, it's all about 
looking for what, uh, what different uh, VCs out there are actually interested in. Everyone's going to have a slightly different concept of, of what is going to be interesting to them, whether it's, you know, we want somebody to have the, you know, the ultimate um, uh, uh, intellectual property, or we want a team that we can really trust to, to bring us over the finish line, or boy, this is, this is a really unique way of being able to solve this. And so sometimes having a tried and true piece of technology that they know that there aren't going to be any risks, there's not going to be any gotchas because the technology is understood. It's applying that technology in a slightly different way to solve a different problem. It eliminates one of the risks from uh, investing in you. So each, each VC uh, organization is going to favor one over the other. You know, it's not a necessarily a tried and true thing that you know, every, you know, these people only invest in this, but you get a, definitely a sense by looking at the portfolios of each of them to try to figure out uh, you know, what's going to be interesting to them specifically. So our closing thoughts, venture capitalists are often perceived as sharks. The TV show Shark Tanks even led to, to driving that persona further. Um, there's a lot of fear of going in front of, of venture capitalists, but the important thing to remember is if they invest in you, then they're your sharks and they are helping you fight when things are, are rough. Absolutely. And uh, it's very important as you're going into this for you to have a very clear understanding of what you're trying to achieve with your organization. Is this, uh, is your goal to have an organization where you can take something over the finish line on your own and you can be the CEO for a long time and, and build up your name? Or is the idea that I just want to be able to cash in on a good idea as quickly as humanly possible because I don't have any aspirations regarding management? All that's kind of important by who you choose. So as, uh, as John mentioned, you know, like they're your sharks, they can do a lot of things for you if you choose the right, you know, they actually call it smart money. Uh, you know, they can do a lot of things to kick open some doors for you. Often when you go into uh, one VC, uh, if you're taking money in to try and, uh, and launch your product, uh, they can often go out to some of their other companies that, uh, uh, that they've invested in and say, hey, you, you may want to buy some of this person's uh, product over there. We think it's a good match. Uh, you know, they can start a lot of conversations for you, which is good. But at the same point in time, you know, depending on your goals, you know, if you close some of those doors on them or choose a, an organization that is not necessarily going to uh, be aggressive on that level, you may not get some of that benefit either. So understand what, what it is that you're trying to achieve right off the bat uh, so that you can make some of those decisions as you go along down the, down the road with these, uh, these organizations. So we want to hear from you. The goal of this series is to share some of the experiences we've had with startup companies and with venture capitalists, with raising funding for, for your organization to achieve the success you're after. And, and we want to hear some of the challenges you've experienced, some of the things that you're facing. And we want to talk about some of those in our future episodes. Absolutely. So yeah, please uh, feel free. Uh, we, we're trying to build a community here. So uh, go into the comment section, ask your questions, uh, interact. Uh, we want to hear from you and we'll try our best to, to respond if you have any questions. So uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, you know, for, for the first 100 people who like, you know, we're going to give you 15% off of your day. We don't have anything to give you, but you, know, you can get 15% of your day back. So have a, uh, we really look forward to hearing from you and, uh, and we look forward to continuing to interact with you as, uh, as we come out with more of these episodes. Thanks for tuning in.